Well, good afternoon, everyone. Great day here at Western Michigan. How about a nice hand for Trey Harrison, the Bronco Band? We're here to introduce our new football coach here at Western Michigan, the 17th football coach in our long and storied history. So let's introduce them from the green room. Your new football coach, Lance Taylor, wife Jamie, son Jet, daughter Gemma, and your athletic director, Dan Bartholomew. Well, again, thank you all for being here. It's a great day here at Western Michigan as we introduce our new football coach. So excited. He comes with tremendous credentials as uh, he becomes our 17th head coach in our history. Well recognized and well respected among the coaches and the administrators that he's worked with, and in particular, the players that he's coached during his career. Most recently, he was the offensive coordinator at Louisville. He was the running backs coach and run game coordinator at Notre Dame, running backs coach at Stanford, wide receivers coach at Appalachian State. He's coached in the college football playoff and numerous New Year's Six Bowl games. He also has in the game, like Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, David Shaw at Stanford, and where he got it all started at his alma mater, Alabama, working for Nick Saban, pretty good company, pretty good mentors. And uh, we want to introduce him here today, but first we're going to bring up the guy who orchestrated the search, along with DHR Global and our friend Glenn Sugiyami. Please welcome your athletic director, Dan Bartholomew. Let's hear it for Robin Hook. There's no retirement in that guy. So it wouldn't be an introductory press conference in Kalamazoo without a little snow. This is good. This is a good way to introduce you all. Um, before I get started, and, and of course I heard Robin thank them as well, I want to give a shout out and let's give a big round of applause and a big hand to our band and our spirit squads. All right? That is a group... Very, very appreciated by the athletic department, and I know by the university. When we ask for help, they're always here. We appreciate that, uh, and certainly I know it's a busy time. Finals week is coming up, and, uh, and, and we thank them for, uh, for being a part of this. I will tell you all, it is a great day, a historic day to be a Bronco, and I'm thrilled to be introducing you all to Coach Lance Taylor, his wife Jamie, his son Jet, and his daughter Gemma. Many thank yous before we get going into introductions here. Uh, I want to first thank our students. I see the Lawson Lunatics hanging out there in the back. I want to give them a shout. So thank you all for coming to celebrate with us here. Your place in line at Lawson Arena is safe. Uh, I also want to recognize the university staff and community members who took the time out of their day today to come celebrate us. Man, what, what, a, what a crowd. Uh, events like this are open to the public for a reason. We need you. We want you by our side supporting us. We want to provide connections that are fun and make you want to spend your time with us. One of the greatest advantages that we have at Western Michigan University is this athletic department. And I take our connection very seriously. We preach family in this department and you are all a part of it. Thank you for being here. I also want to thank those that helped me during a fast and furious week where I was centrally focused on this search. First, our football team. I met with them two Mondays ago on an incredibly emotional day, and since then have had follow-up meetings with certain leadership groups as well as phone calls with other athletes. Transitions are difficult for everybody, and I promised them that with the right attitude, they would experience positive growth 
that would prepare them for countless future experiences with life's uncertainties. That type of growth is what a university experience is all about. And all they did was support each other, maintain a great attitude, and stay focused on finishing strong. So thank you guys. I want to thank the football staff, in particular Lou Esposito, Eric Evans, Mike Parrish, and Grant Guy, who took on leadership roles and kept the lines of communication open. We had one singular focus, the team and the well-being of the program, and everybody responded, and I thank them for their professionalism. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Next, my staff and athletics. There was an entire welcoming brigade at the airport yesterday when we landed that included our band, uh, our spirit squads, the news, members of Bronco Nation, and an actual live Bronco. That was cool. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, from that to today's events, it has been first class. And I can assure you that events like this don't get pulled off in the two hours I gave them to get ready for it. Uh, they were already prepared, and they pulled it off in a first class way. So thank you to all of you. I want to thank my support system, starting right here with President Ed Montgomery and his wife, Carrie. He is someone who always answers my calls at all hours of the day, always asks the right questions, is incredibly supportive, and inspires me to be thoughtful, deliberate, and prepared when it's time to have a conversation. So thank you, President Montgomery. I extend the same gratitude to my Vice President colleagues on our President's Cabinet, many of whom had to work odd hours to keep this thing going and who have been fabulous supporters of our vision in athletics. A search that lasts eight days and spans three different states does not allow for large committees, uh, but I do want to acknowledge and thank two individuals who I leaned on for advice and counsel as we navigated this journey. First, Dr. Luchara Wallace, our faculty athletic representative and director of the Lewis Walker and of course, my partner in university advancement, Jim Colhane, a former coach himself. Uh, those are two people who believe in the vision, help guide my thought process, and whose instincts are impeccable. So thank you both. I also want to thank my roommate on the road, my roomie, and uh, search partner, Glenn Sugiyama of DHR Global, who provides a level-headed and professional approach to the search process and who keeps his engine on full blast at all times, and we needed it. And finally, thank you to Bronco Nation. I joked about receiving a lot of free advice during the basketball search, and you know, you didn't let me down this time. But I am sincere when I say that this is what makes this place special and this job a lot of fun. I appreciate the multiple forms of investment you all make and the care factor that you have for this program, and I know we will make you proud. I have done two now, and I can tell you that football searches are fast and furious. Our process began last Tuesday, where I gathered my list and got on nightly Zoom calls with the intention to get on the road over the weekend and get face-to-face -face with our finalists. In a football search, every second matters. New jobs open, the transfer portal looms large, and the dynamics change hourly. Every day is like a month. What never changed was where Coach Taylor sat on that list. Knowing he was out west, I chased him out there, and after two days of interviews, it was clear as day who our next coach should be. And I will tell you, I was not getting on a plane back home until we nailed down terms, and I can tell you, I landed in Kalamazoo at 10 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday night, and I've been smiling ever since. As we prepared for this great event, my trusty sidekick, Elaine Russell, asked me about the presentation at the press conference. What do you want people to see when you are talking in introducing Coach Taylor. And I said championship trophies. Because that's the vision, that's what's possible, and that's where we're going. Championships don't have a singular focus. It's not just what happens on the field. As we look to build a championship culture, we hosted the second of what I hope will be many uh, of similar events this morning in the W Club. The event is called the Breakfast of Champions. And we host it any time we have a program that wins a championship. This morning, we celebrated head coach Chad Wiseman in the men's soccer program. <laughs> Give him a shout. We opened the event to the team,
to our faculty, to our staff, to team supporters, and to our student-athlete leadership. The goal is to recognize championships and reflect on how they were built. And the bulk of the conversation was not about what happened on the field. We talked about the program having the second highest GPA in Division I. We talked about the fact that they had three academic All-Americans and 12 in the last four years, which is the most in Division I. We talked about the little details, the sports medicine staff going above and beyond to keep our team healthy, the content creators expanding our media reach and elevating our student athletes in that space, well-executed travel plans and celebratory send-offs for big games. We talked about young men who came in as freshmen and are leaving as community and campus leaders, holistically prepared for life and appreciative of those that have helped them along the way. The championship on the field was a byproduct of that culture. Everyone got the credit and no one took it. And before them stood a coach who demanded that excellence from his program and his support staff, who set a vision and then expected his leadership and support staff to hold each other accountable to it. And they did. He was both loved and respected by his team. And his team was surrounded by a community that believed it would be done and was inspired by his leadership. The vision was clear, every detail mattered, and everyone held each other accountable to it. That is championship culture. And the only way to build a championship culture is to surround yourself with champions and allow them to integrate their own championship traits into everyone around them. And Lance Taylor is a champion. He's a champion as an athlete and a coach a man that has won conference championships in the SEC, the Southland Conference, and the Pac-12, a man that has won division championships and coached in an AFC championship in the NFL, a man that has coached in the college football playoff, the pinnacle event in college football that will soon expand and allow for an automatic qualification from a group of five school. Lance puts championship efforts into everything that he does, a man that started out as a walk-on at Alabama and finished as a team captain with 38 straight game appearances and two championship trophies. A man who went to school wanting to be a CEO, finding a passion in improving the lives of college student athletes and shifting that leadership focus to quickly climb the ladder in the coaching industry. Lance is a championship recruiter. He's recruited some of the best athletes in the world, contributing to recruiting classes regularly ranked among the top of his conferences, and he has sat with those same recruits at their Heisman Trophy finalist ceremonies. In our interview, Lance did not talk to me about the athletic accolades of his recruits, although he could have. He talked about the joy he got out of impacting their lives and seeing them better their positions in life through their universities and through sports. Finally, Lance is a championship leader and a championship human being. As we started this process, I stated that I wanted someone with relentless energy, someone who walks into a room and inspires you to be greater, who inspires the team to be greater. In my time with Lance, he pre presented an extraordinary and aspirational plan centered on building a championship culture, developing student athletes to become better people and better suited to be successful. Many of you have seen the testimonial quotes that accompanied our press release on Lance. Those were some of the industry's finest people who lined up to speak to Lance's character. I don't make a hire without calling everybody the candidate might have crossed paths with and that I also respect and trust. The bulk of the search process is actually spent on that. I want to share some quotes with you that were shared with me in private that encapsulate what I saw in my meetings with Lance. All of these came from industry leaders that I trust. Dan, what you're going to see in Lance is someone who, when you talk to him, you're just going to feel better. You'll feel inspired and more confident. He will make you want to be better. Dan, I've seen few coaches that can develop trusting and caring relationships with their athletes, but also hold them accountable to being better. It's not a coincidence that the guy who speaks focus on improving those around him and does it in a way that everyone responds to. And this is my favorite. Dan, I'm just telling you, while he will connect with the athletes in a genuine way and they will love him, you are never going to see a 15-yard penalty with that guy as your coach. No pressure. Get on board, Bronco Nation. 
the pride in our football program and the championship expectations are back. Championship culture is back. It will need to be built, and you will feel inspired and connected along the way. And the vision is shared. I didn't have to tell Coach what the vision was. He told me, and we were aligned immediately. And I can't wait for you all to meet him. Our new head football coach, Lance Taylor. Go Broncos. <laughs> I am humbled, honored, and excited to be the head football coach at Western Michigan University. I want to thank President Montgomery and Director of Athletics, Dan Bartholome, for selecting me to lead this program. I also want to thank my beautiful family, Jamie, Gemma, and Jet. Thank you guys for your love and support, and I couldn't do this without you. I love you. What makes this job special and this university special are the people. These guys were out last night to greet us, waited in the cold for hours for our plane to land, and gave us the warmest welcome. In the car ride home, my son asked me, why do I feel so special today, and why is everybody making me feel so spe special? Thank you for that. You have made me special, feel special, and my family f feel welcomed. What also makes a university and place special are the people inside, the students, our players, teachers, faculty, alumni, former players, our incredible fans, and the great people in, in the Kalamazoo community. I want to thank you guys for the outpouring of support and excitement for me and my family. Dan and I connected immediately. Everybody that I talked to raved about Dan, his energy, his excitement, his passion, his vision, his leadership, people that I trust. I saw all those things immediately when I sat down with him. He just mentioned it, but we connected so I want to thank Dan. He's an incredible leader for our university and a big part of why I took this job. I believe in his vision and his commitment to excellence on and off the field. I am committed to building an elite championship program. I will not shy away from high goals, lofty expectations. We will set the standard of excellence for our players, coaches, and everyone that touches our program. We will build championship habits and each day strive for competitive greatness. Thank you again, Bronco Nation, and let's be great. Go Broncos. Better? Hey, there we go. Uh, we do have media members in the house. We really appreciate you being here covering this uh, wonderful event today, introducing Lance as our head coach. For our media members, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Adam will get you a microphone. Please identify yourself. You can ask a question of either Coach Taylor or Dan Bartholome, our athletic director. So questions, here we go. This is questions for Coach. Coach, I'm Levi Rickert with the Native New Potawatomi. So welcome. We have some council members up here too. So looks like, uh, Coach, how will you integrate? How do you integrate Native American warriorship into your program? Uh, thank you. Um, so 
my father is Native American um, from the tribe of Moa Choctaw. We grew up two miles from our reservation. Um, grew up going to powwows, being part of our native culture, learning our culture, uh, being plugged into um, our people and, and learning our history and traditions. Um, and I think that it has woven and made, or, or, or it has made me who I am and part of the fabric of what I do and what I believe in. And so I think that that will exude through our uh, program and what I do and how I carry out um, our mission every single day. And so um, I'm very proud of my heritage. Um, blessed to have been part of um, a loving people um, and, and, and proud, uh, and I know that they are proud of me as well, and they, they let me know every day. Hey, Coach, Shandy Pepper from Channel 3. Nice to see you again. Um, you've kind of had, a, obviously, a very lengthy resume, and um, I was impressed by some of the men you've coached under, obviously, Nick Saban is a grad assistant, uh, Brian Kelly, David Shaw, Rex Ryan, uh, Ron Rivera. It's quite a diverse and very talented group of men. I just wanted to ask who perhaps had the biggest impact on you. Yeah, great to see you again. Um, <clears throat> I've been very blessed and fortunate uh, to, to be under some great coaches, some great leaders, uh, part of some great teams, but also coach some great young men. Um, the one thing that I can say is, is there's not one single person that I could single out and say this guy has made the biggest impact on my life. I think that they have all had a huge impact on my life. Um, they have m made me and molded me into who I am. Um, and really it is my why. The reason why I coach are for these guys because the people in my life that had the biggest impact on me outside of my parents were my coaches. Um, and I wanted to have a positive impact um, and help young people, just like my coaches helped me, uh, to build a successful future and give me opportunities and believe in me. And I told, but I'm also going to push you and hold you accountable. That's our job as leaders. It's our job when we have parents, as, when we are parents to our own kids. And so these guys are going to get that every single day for me. So to answer your question, I've been molded and impacted by, by every single one of them. Um, I, 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 try to, I try to be a sponge. I've tried to be a sponge my whole career and continue to grow in everything that I've done. Um, that was my next question, actually, about your team meeting today. I want to ask, um, your crucial time. You've got a lot of guys in the portal. Uh, National Signing Day coming up in about a week and a half. I guess you talk about this pivotal next 10 days or so. Yeah, it, it happens fast in football. Um, there's about 10 days until the, the dead period. Um, and so my first order of business, and I told these guys this, um, my priority is, is them, our, our current team. Uh, I want to get to know these guys. I want to spend some time with them and start building that relationship because I think relationships uh, is why I do what I do and, and what's so important um, to me. And so these guys, are, our current team, is what's so important. Obviously, we have to jump immediately into, you know, recruiting, and that, you know, includes our current, you know, recruiting class, um, getting to know them and their parents and letting them get to know me and, and, and the staff that we are going to hire, uh, but also the, the, the portal. And that's part of the college football world right now that we, we all live in. And that's where my experience in the NFL has helped with the roster management and the transition of, you know, portal guys and uh, losing guys and also going out and, and identifying and evaluating talent. Hi, Remy Monahan, Fox 17. Um, what initially really excited you about the job here at Western and specifically the talent that these men have and, of course, playing in the MAC as well? Yeah, I, I think you just mentioned it. I mean, the, the talent, the current talent on this roster is what um, drew me to this job. Uh, meeting with Dan, seeing his vision uh, for, for our program, uh, and then just having watched this program from afar and seeing an undefeated season, them chase after a championship, going to a Cotton Bowl, those are all things that um, are expected and the expectations here are to win. And I want to go to a place where people uh, want to win and expect to win. And, um, and, and those were really the things that, that excited me about this. Um, I think this place, is, is, again, is special because of the people, uh, and we're going to build it the right way. I know there's a lot of hard work that's going to go into this. Um, it's not going to happen by chance. Uh, before we can be, be champions, we have to think like champions. We have to prepare like champions. We have to train like champions in everything that we do every single day because those things that we do on a daily basis show up on Saturdays.
Coach, Eric Ingles with the MY. What, what is going to be just the hallmark of a Broncos team? What is, what is it that you want opponents to say, man, facing Western, that was just, what is going to be the culture of this team? We are going to play fast, we are going to be physical, and we are going to finish and play with relentless effort. Travis Leonardi with the Western Herald. So, with the expansion of the college football playoff in 2024, uh, domination in the MAC would grant an appearance potentially. What steps will you take to prepare the program for this unique opportunity in the future? Yeah, I think with the college football playoff expanding, it, it will. Um, I'm a very process oriented person, not an outcome oriented person. Our goals will absolutely be to play, in, you know, for a MAC championship, to win a MAC championship, and then to play in the college football playoffs and get a, get a chance to play in those. But what we do every day will determine whether we play in the playoffs. And so the work starts daily and building those daily habits and those championship habits that I talked about. Alex Yannikopoulos, Wood TV. Coach, what is your understanding of the culture of Broncos football to this point, and how do you want to complement or enhance in your own style? Yeah, a lot of the things that we, we just talked about, patience to win, um, and, and, you know, for, for my first time being a head coach, I wanted to take, uh, I didn't want to take any job. I wanted to take the right job. And as I went through the process, it really, for me, I, I know I was being evaluated and interview, viewing, I was being interviewed, but I was also evaluating and interviewing. And everything that I saw from Dan to the current roster to what they've done on the field excited me about what we can do and what we can be. Any other questions? Gotcha. Um, when I was reading your Louisville bio before, when you were just a candidate, um, I, I saw that one of the reasons you left Notre Dame to go to Louisville was specifically to prepare yourself better for this step. So with that being said, how did that year at Louisville prepare you? Yeah, that's a great question, and, and uh, that was something that my family and I talked about. It's always been a dream, goal, and aspiration of mine to stop along the way, and Louisville was an opportunity to continue to grow, uh, to be a coordinator for a first time, uh, to manage and lead a staff, uh, to set game plans and, you know, install schedules and lead a whole gr uh, group of men, uh, not just a position group. And so just going to Louisville helped prepare me in so many ways that um, just being a position coach had not at that time. nervous energy but excitement you know you've prepared for this you know you're ready for this opportunity and you're ready for it you know that you're ready for it uh, but there's still the unknown it's that nervous energy and excitement it's those butterflies you get in the locker room right before the game uh, when you know you're going to go out and dominate but you're just ready for kickoff <laughs> all right thank you coach let's hear it again for coach taylor Want to welcome the family, by the way, to West Michigan. Uh, welcome to West Michigan. You can't see your hand in front of your face right now, so enjoy it. Hope to see all of you at hockey tonight. I believe Coach will be there dropping the first puck. I know the Lawson Lunatics will be there, right? Let's all be there. Support Coach Taylor and the Broncos against North Dakota. We got an aspiring young hockey player here in Jet Taylor, so he is really fired up about Bronco hockey. Thanks again for being here. For our media members who would like to do one-on-one -on -one with Coach Taylor or Dan Bartholomew, you're welcome to. We have a few minutes available to do that. So thanks again for being here. Go Broncos!